Yo guys, what's up? My name is Dijanji Prime, the ITK, here again with another album review. Now, today we are talking about one of my favorite duos, Ibei, and their latest album, Ash. Now, Ibei are a duo, they're twins actually, from Cuba. They sing in, I think, Spanish, French, English, and Yoruba. What I find interesting is that Nigerian Yorubas don't seem to be able to understand what they're saying it seems like it's some form of the yoruba dialect they can pick certain words but they can't really fully understand what they're saying so it's always interesting to see stuff like that now this album overall feels a lot more politically conscious and touches a bit more on society than their previous album or their debut album ebay um, where Ibei was a lot more spiritual and I got to learn recently they were talking about some kind some um, on Ibei they were basically giving instructions to worship um, and chants and all of those things on this album there's a lot more politically aware society socially aware content and commentary not saying that the spirituality is not there but you know the album opens up with the track carried this for years I'm um, essentially saying, you know, I've carried this for years and I feel like this is sort of a, a theme with eBay is they're big on womanhood and th one of the reasons for that is they seem to worship the goddess Oshun and Oshun is like, um, for example, she only, she only picks female priestesses so I might be diving a bit into Yoruba um, spirituality and please correct me if I'm wrong on some of these things but Oshun only picks female priest, priestesses and she's all about femininity and all of that so I feel like this track talks about you know carrying things for years the way a woman might carry a child carrying all these feelings and emotions because there's a lot of feelings and emotions and just stories that are relayed on this album now I will say one of the reasons I loved Ibei, the first album, was it was very bare bones. There was a lot of percussion, there was a lot of snapping and clapping, and it felt like, you know, you were just gathered around a fireplace, a traditional African fireplace, listening to stories and that. This album sounds a lot more refined. You're hearing a lot more electronic sort of R&B pop production on this. It's not as bare bones as Ibei, Though it still has those elements of, you know, African percussion, snapping, clapping. There's a couple of times where a choir is featured on here. So you still get that kind of, you know, how do, what do you, I don't want to use African too much. But you still can't get that kind of um, communal feel, communal chant on it. But it's a lot more refined um, this time around. The single of this album, Deathless, um, basically... What I find interesting is the imagery, and I'll get into the imagery um, in a bit. But this track just talks about, you know, being deathless and always standing up to oppression. Verse 1 talks of a story about, um, you know, do you smoke, what's your name? And apparently, this is a story that happened to Kainde, one of the duo, one of the twins here, and where she, she was subjected to racial profiling where a police officer essentially came up to her and was like, what's your name? You look like you smoke, and then emptied the contents of her bag. Um, so that's what's, that's the story on verse 1. And um, verse 2 essentially says the same thing about profiling, you know, with your skin, you might as well sell drugs. And that's essentially a, a, one of the themes on this album, dealing with oppression and just continuing to live you continue growing and um, you can't be killed what doesn't kill you always makes you stronger now back to the imagery um, if you've watched the video you see that th there's sort of this kind of birth process you just continue being born into it and it seems like a cyclical event um, like I said earlier they seem to be followers of the Oshun deity and the Oshun deity is also the goddess of fertility so a lot of um, people would go to the priestess and pray to Oshun for a child. And usually they would get twins, um, which, you know, Ibei are twins as well. So I think that imagery is very interesting as well. And the spirituality, I think a lot of people don't get the spirituality. And maybe, you know, Ibei has a responsibility to maybe articulate these things better. And it also explains to me why 
Yoruba people don't exactly aren't exactly as you know they're not exactly rushing to evade. It seems like they're a bit scared of their you know their spirituality because like I said they're giving instructions and prayers and all these kinds of spiritual things on their albums. They're not just chanting for the sake of chanting. These are actual you know spiritual prayers and stuff like that. There's a track actually on here where they talk about bringing six antelopes or something like that. Another track I found interesting was Wanna Be Like You and this is essentially longing for youth. Um, I feel like an elderly person is looking at the vigor and the energy of youth and essentially saying, you know, why can't this be me? I want to be like you. I want to let go of the stress that comes with age and just be free and just be reckless. Um, that's an interesting track. And then the, uh, another track is No Man Is Big Enough For My Arms. And this contains a sample of a speech by Michelle Obama where she's basically saying, um, I think this was on the campaign trail where, you know, they were dissing Trump and it's like, the measure of any society is in how well they treat their, their women. And basically, I feel like no man is big enough for my arms. Maybe no man is big enough for my love or deserving enough for my love. Because when I think of big enough for my arms or big arms, I'm thinking about hug, so love. Um, but that's just my interpretation. Let me know what your interpretation is down in the comment below. But um, yeah, and like I said, Oshun is big on femininity and women. So it makes sense, you know, you kind of string these parts together. The album closes with what should be the title track, Ash. And this essentially is like a darker version of Eleguia, which is actually the intro of their previous album. And for me, that track, Eleguia, opens with the lighting of a flame. And this track opens with Ash. So I guess maybe this is a rebirth or essentially a death and a rebirth. Maybe that's why deathless is what it is. You know, you die and you're reborn. Maybe this is another phase for them. Maybe they are ash, they're dead. Because they say basically there's no more heart, there's no more home for them. They are ash. So I think this is a very interesting, a little bit of a creepy track. So overall, I think this album does a good job of combining societal issues such as race, um, gender and femininity and womanhood as well as spirituality and sort of tying all these things together. While I will admit so far I don't enjoy this as much as their debut album, it still is a good album, a very enjoyable album and a very soothing and reflective album. So overall I give this an 8.5 over 10. Let me know, have you listened to this album? What are your thoughts? Also, if you're, you know, into Yoruba spirituality, I don't mind taking a bit of a lesson down in the comments below. But yeah, check it out, Ibeyi Ash, great album, 8.5 for me. And um, that's all for this review. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to leave a like, check out some of my other videos. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed day and goodbye.